Hello, class. Last time you studied mitosis. Yeah. Uh, there is another type of cell division, which is called meiosis. So today you will compare what is the difference between mitosis and meiosis in terms of uh, chromosome behavior in each phase and different chromosome number after each cell division, also different daughter cell number after each cell division. Heredity is the transmission of a trait from parents to offspring. So what you can receive from parents is a DNA. DNA can be transmitted. That means a gene, G because genes are made up of a segment of a DNA. So you receive DNA half from mother, you receive a DNA half from father. And when you receive DNA from parents, sexual reproduction are uh, involved. So we will study about sexual reproductive organ first. Sexual organs are called gonad. So male gonad is called testis. And female gonad is called ovary. Genes are passed to the next generation via reproductive cells called gamete gamete. We call sperm and egg gamete. These gamete can be formed from male gonad and female gonad. For example, testes, male gonad testes undergo meiosis, then they produce sperm. Female gonad, ovary, undergo meiosis to produce gamete, which is called egg. So the gamete, such as sperm and egg, are produced by meiosis from gonad. And then meiosis produce haploid gamete by undergoing meiosis. So do you remember last time you studied diploid? Diploid, but this time you will study haploid. So haploid is the more related business with meiosis. Okay. When you look at the cell, when you look at inside the cell, uh, there are a chromosome exactly identical to each other. We call this a pair of chromosome, we call this homologous chromosome. So in other words, the cells that have two of each type of chromosome, we call them homologous chromosome. According to homologous chromosome, chromosome numbers in any species can be denoted 2N. This is diploid. For example, chromosome number of a homo sapiens, such as a human, can be denoted 2N equal 46. So human cell, human individual cell hold 46 chromosome. Therefore, the cells that have a homologous chromosome are called the diploid cell, and then it is identified to N. Then if you divide 2N by 2 equal N, single N, we call this what? Haploid half of diploid. So in case of a human, 2n is 46. Therefore, n equal, you divide 46, divided by two, become 23. A gamete, sperm and egg have how many chromosome number? Haploid. So there are 23 chromosomes in the sperm. There are 23 chromosomes in the egg, in the oocyte. Oocyte and egg are same, same cell. Except sperm and egg, the rest part of your body has 46 chromosomes in individual cell. 
So be familiar with this, the meaning of a haploid and then also diploid. So from mitosis, cell continue to maintain diploid, but from meiosis, the chromosome number reduced in half to form haploid. So again, gamete, superm and uh, egg contain a single set of chromosome, we call that haploid. For humans, haploid number is n equal 23. Each set of 23 consists of 22 orosomes and a single sex chromosome. So let's think about diploid again. Diploid is 22n equal 46 chromosome. This can be write down 44 plus two sex chromosome. In case of a female, it is gonna be XX, right? Now, when you think about haploid, you just divide by two, 23 equal 22 plus X. Okay. So, oocyte or egg cell has 22 plus X. These are the configuration of a chromosome in the gamete, in the egg. So each set of 23 chromosome consists of 22. We call the uh, inside the chromosome, except the sex chromosome, the rest of the chromosome are called orosome. So 22 orosome and a single sex chromosome. Okay. This is the case of female. What about the male? In case of a male, 2n equal 44 plus xy. So sperm can carry 22 chromosome plus x or some sperm can carry 22 plus y, right? In case of male, right? Therefore, the sex chromosome which determine the sex of individual are called x and y. In case of a female x, in case of a male x or y. In an egg, unfertilized egg, the sex chromosome is only X. In sperm cell, the sex chromosome may be either X or Y. Okay. So the remaining 22 pairs of chromosome, this one, this one is called what? Orogen. This one is called orogen, 22 pairs of chromosome. So when you look at this configuration, these 44 is what? Orosome. This part is sex chromosome. Okay, this part is sex chromosome. This part is orosome. Let's solve this question. A typical human body cell contains how many sex chromosomes? One sex chromosome, two, 23, 46. The question is asking about a typical human body cell. Human body cell. They are not asking about the reproductive cell. They did not mention reproductive cell in the question. Therefore, in human cell body, you need to think about diploid, right? Human cell body. Therefore, how many sex chromosomes present in the diploid cell? 2n equal 46 equal 44 plus xx, or 2n equal 46 equal 44 plus xy. At the time, how many sex chromosomes? So, two, this is the answer. And if in the sperm, 
how many sex chromosomes? Then your answer will be one. All right, I think you already familiar of this uh, figure because you study karyotype. Karyotype is the arrangement of chromosome in a way that homologous chromosome are paired by comparing size, shape, and location of the centromere. If you look at the left panel, it shows chromosome number and the karyotype of a female diploid cell. If you look at the right panel, it shows chromosome number and karyotype of a male diploid cell. How do you know? Can you see here? XX. Here's XY. Right? So this is chromosome one, two, three, four, up to 23 pairs, 20, 22, 23 pairs, 23 pairs is composed of XX, right? These homologous chromosomes pair up and then group them and then scientists put the a number. So even though you see single number, it has two chromosomes. Number two has a two chromosome. Number three has a pair of a homologous chromosome. Okay. Therefore, if we go by up to number 23, so 44 plus XX. So this is female karyotype. And in this case is male karyotype. So 44, you have to multiply this 44 plus xy. In this case, 44 plus xx. So you can uh, write down chromosome arrangement as 2n equal 46 to both female and male diploid cell because there are 46 chromosomes in female and male respectively. But if you want to uh, indicate the sex chromosome in diploid cell, female cells can be denoted 2n equal 44 plus xx, whereas male cell is denoted 2n equal 44 plus xy. Haploid cell results from half of a diploid cell. So diploid cell is divided by 2. In other words, 2n divided by 2 equal n. So 2n divided by 2 equal n, therefore n equal 22 plus x. In this case, n equal 22 plus x or 22 plus y. These are called what? Gamut. So, Gamete indicate egg, oocyte, and sperm. When oocyte and sperm fuse together, it generates new organism. Only one set is present in the gamete because egg has only haploid chromosome, same as a sperm has a haploid chromosome. Thus, the gamete only has a haploid. When an egg and sperm, each containing half of complement of a chromosome, they fuse together, that it produces a single cell. We call this the same single cell zygote. And the fusion of a gamete, such as egg plus sperm, we call this phenomena fertilization. In case of non-reproductive cell or somatic cell, they have diploid cells, so they have two N. Two sets of chromosomes are present in somatic cell of adult individual, making them diploid because they already have two sets. Why? They receive one set from mother, the other set from father by way of fertilization. Let's look at life cycle, the human life cycle. 
if you look at this cyan color, that cyan color present haploid life cycle. Haploid life cycle. Okay. And then if you look at this apricot color, that indicate diploid life cycle. So when you look at these women and men, they become mature and then they reach puberty, then they have ability to produce oocyte and sperm from ovary and testes respectively. When gamete is formed from ovary, they undergo meiosis. Same thing. From testes, when sperm is formed from testes, testes undergo meiosis. Then sperm and egg are formed. These sperm and egg, they are haploid. So you can see sperm have and haploid egg also has haploid gamete. This egg and sperm, they fuse together. We call that fertilization. And then we call the cell, once sperm and egg fuse together, then we call that cell zygote. Since they fuse, this one haploid plus another haploid become diploid. So zygote is a single cell. Actually, egg is one cell. Sperm is one cell, but when sperm and egg are fused, only this head part of sperm enter egg, and then the rest part is just cut it up. And then inside the head part of sperm, there are DNA. Therefore, once the head part of sperm enter egg, still it is one cell, because the entire sperm cell did not enter egg cell. Therefore, only portion of, since only portion of sperm cell enter join to egg cell, therefore still zygote is a single cell, one cell, but the chromosome is diploid. This zygote undergo what? Mitosis, mitosis. And then become baby, and then once become rich puberty, they continue to undergo mitosis. The significance of mitosis lies in that somatic cells have a genetically identical configuration. Okay? That is the uh, uh, significance of mitosis. And uh, if you look at our body, our body is composed of a somatic tissue and germline tissue. Somatic tissue can be made up by mitosis. Fertilization results in the formation of a diploid zygote that begin to divide by mitosis. This single cell, this single diploid cell means what? Zygote. This zygote eventually give rise to all of the cells of your body and these cells are called somatic cells or non-reproductive cells. The somatic cells keep doing mitosis to form genetically identical diploid daughter cell. This is, I stressed that last time, the significance of mitosis is going to provide genetically identical configuration of each cell in your body. Otherwise, it can, the tumor can be developed. Compared to somatic tissue, germline tissue is a reproductive cell. Okay? Somatic tissue is a non-reproductive cell. Germline tissue, the cell that will eventually undergo meiosis to produce gamete. These cells are referred to as germline cell, okay, germline cell. Both somatic cells and the gamete producing germline cells are diploid. The germline cells undergo meiosis producing haploid gamete. So I said from 
Mm, the sperm can be produced from testes, but testes is not single cell. Testes is organ, organ, reproductive organ. Therefore, this reproductive organ has many, many, many cells. Okay? Until testes is fully mature, mitosis keep occur. But once this testes fully mature and has ability to produce sperm, then some cell inside the testes undergo meiosis to produce sperm. By the same token, in order to have mature ovary, mitosis occur. But once female reach puberty, some cell from ovary undergo meiosis to produce egg. Okay, so until humans has a fully developed reproductive organ, they undergo mitosis. But once they reach puberty, then they undergo some different kinds of cell division called meiosis in order to produce reproductive cell, in order to produce a gamete. So one more time. This time, if you look at this blue uh, color, that is haploid life cycle, and the yellow color is diploid life cycle. So when these adults fully mature and then they produce egg from female, sperm from male, at the time they undergo meiosis. Okay? The ones is a gamete. Egg and sperm, we call the gamete. Gamete formed, they can fuse, they form zygote. Once egg and sperm fuse, they form diploid cell, which we call zygote. This zygote continue to do mitosis. So it become embryo, fetus, baby, and then keep growing up and then become adult. Okay. So this life cycle, so your life will undergo mitosis and meiosis, both cell division. But you have to think about that, okay, once zygote is formed, individual cell hold 2N, 46 chromosome. But once they undergo meiosis, chromosome number reduce in half. Okay, think about that, uh, how they can happen. So alteration between diploid and haploid. The pattern of alteration between diploid chromosomes and haploid chromosomes. So from ovary, some female germ nine cells, they have, they hold a diploid chromosome uh, 2N, 46 chromosome. Now they undergo, here is the meiosis. Then gamete has 23 chromosome. It's the same thing to male germ nine cells. Once this egg and sperm fuse, we call that cell zygote, and it has 2N, 46 chromosome. This zygote grown into adult. Why chromosome number need to reduce in half? Think about that. After meiosis, if chromosome number is not reduced, maybe maintain 2N. The same thing in male germ line, 2N, then your zygote will have how many? 4N. So in other words, 92 chromosomes inside a cell. Okay, when this, this adult grown up and the next generation, so next generation, this person has 4N and then the other partner also has 4N. If there's no reduction in chromosome number, then the gamete will have also 4N. And here's 4N. Then once these gametes fuse and then they will form 8N. So inside the cell, chromosome number is about 184. And then this is gonna continue 
generation by generation by generation by generation by. So inside of the cell, chromosome number is gonna increase every generation. It does not make sense, right? So significance of meiosis is preventing the new organism from having twice as many chromosomes as its parents. Once chromosome number reduced in half, the next generation or the following generation, all humans continually have the 46 chromosome in every cell, but only for reproduction, the chromosome number reduced in half because you need to receive half of chromosome from mother and the rest of half chromosome from father. Let's solve this question. Myotic cell division in animals occur in where and result in the production of body cell, adult cell, body cell, parent cell, testes and ovary, and gamete, testes and ovary. Diploid cell, which could be the answer. Mitotic cell division in animal occurs in testes and ovary and results in the production of gamete. So number C is the answer. So you're familiar with the diploid and haploid cell. One more time, for humans, the diploid cell, we write down to n equal 46. If a tiger has a 38 chromosome in the cell, right? Then you can write down to n equal 38. The 46 chromosome are deployed to n in a human somatic cell are two sets of 23. Each pair of homologous chromosome include one chromosome coming from mother, the other element of pair of chromo homologous chromosome coming from the father. At sexual maturity, the ovaries and testes produce haploid gamete. The gamete are the only types of human cell produced by meiosis rather than mitosis. Only diploid cell can undergo meiosis. Haploid cell cannot undergo meiosis. Haploid cell is the end of cell division. Haploid cell is for fertilization, not doing another cell division. That's why only diploid cell can undergo meiosis. Haploid cell cannot undergo meiosis. Meiosis results in one set of chromosomes in each gamete. Therefore, they have only N, okay, 23 chromosomes. Fertilization and meiosis alternate in sexual life cycles to maintain chromosome number. That's why chromosome number reduced in half from meiosis. Let's study a little bit review. And pair of homologous duplicate chromosome. So meiosis operate a little bit different from mitosis, but uh, they also share some commonality in some aspect. So for meiosis, chromosome also need to duplicate. So these are what? One chromosome, and then this is another chromosome, okay? But they are homologous chromosome. Therefore, pair, pair of homologous duplicate chromosome means here, when you look at this chromosome, you can see sister chromatid, okay? And sister chromatid. So each chromosome is already duplicated. And then when they bind this group them together, that means pair of homologous chromosome. So one more time, if we look at, can I ask how many chromosomes does this cell have? 
how many chromosomes does this cell have? Can you write down that chromosome number, scientific notification to n equal what? How many? To n equal six. This is correct answer. If you write down to n equal twelve, that is not correct. This is duplicated chromosome, right? But here, this is a centromere. On the centromere, two sister chromatid attach each other, tightly bind. And then I told you that whenever you count chromosome, count the number of centromere. One, two, three, four, five, six. So when you look at this chromosome, you can, you can pull out information such as, okay, here's this, maybe I call this A chromosome has the other partner of a homologous chromosome here. Okay. And then this B chromosome has partner of a, a pair of homologous chromosome here. That's why they say the pair of homologous chromosome. Okay. And these, see, if I see like this, they are homologous chromosome, pair of homologous chromosome. But each chromosome is duplicated, duplicated. A cell also shows not only homologous chromosome, but also when you look at this duplicated form, these are what? Sister chromatid. This is sister chromatid, correct? But this is a sister chromatid. But when you look at this and this, they are non-sister chromatid. Okay. That's why they say the non-sister chromatid. These and these are sister chromatid. And these and these are sister chromatid. But between this and this is non-sister chromatid. One more time. Here we go. This is a sister chromatid. This is a sister chromatid. Also, this is sister chromatid. Sister chromatid. But these and these are non-sister chromatid. How non-sister chromatid can come out? Non-sister chromatid can be described between a pair of a homologous chromosome. A pair of a homologous chromosome. Once single chromosome duplicate, so they form two sister chromatid, we just simply call sister chromatid. But when you put this chromosome, duplicated uh, chromosome, and then duplicated chromosome side by side, this and this is going to be what? Non-sister chromatid. Okay. So try to be familiarized with these kinds of naming. A sister chromatid, non-sister chromatid, DNA duplication, chromosome duplication, the same meaning, and homologous pair. And when you look at this red, one set of chromosome which shows red color coming from mother. The other set of blue color chromosome, they are coming from father. Again, diploid cell undergo meiosis to form haploid cell. And this is mother side, and this can be father side. Okay. And then egg and sperm fuse together. We call that fertilization to form zygote. Diploid fertilization, fertilized egg is called zygote. Now we are going to examine meiosis in detail. 
Similar to mitosis, meiosis is preceded, preceded by the replication of a chromosome. You saw that just before. But there's a difference between mitosis and meiosis. Meiosis take place in two sets of cell division called meiosis one and meiosis two. What does it mean? So once meiosis one occur, immediately another division, we call meiosis two followed. The two cell division result in four daughter cells rather than two daughter cells. From mitosis, you only have two daughter cells, but from meiosis, you will have four daughter cells. From meiosis, each daughter cell has only haploid. So you have to keep in mind, unlike mitosis, meiosis occur in two sets of cell division, meiosis one and meiosis two. And the daughter cells from meiosis are haploid and the number of daughter cells are four, not two. So I said meiosis one and meiosis two, and then meiosis one, is uh, composed of a prof prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, and telophase one. And during meiosis one, chromosome number reduced in half. So we call this reductional division because chromosome number reduced in half. Meiosis two is similar to mitosis because sister chromatids separation occur during meiosis two. The result is a four haploid daughter cell and then each daughter cell is unduplicated chromosome or unreplicated chromosome. We will get in there more detail. So think about this. A parent cell has 16 chromosomes how many sister chromatids will be present after duplication of the chromosome? This question is different from question asking if a parent cell has a 16 chromosome, how many chromosomes will be present after duplication of the chromosome? Okay. They are asking the number of a sister chromatid. They are not asking about the number of chromosomes after duplication, right? So the answer will be each chromosome produce two sister chromatid. Each chromosome will form two sister chromatid after duplication. Therefore, the answer is 36. If the question asks about if a parent cell has 16 chromosomes, how many chromosomes will be present after duplication of the chromosome? Then the answer is 16. So don't, do not confuse that. Why? Because the sister chromatid is still tightly attached on centromere, and then I suggest you count the number of centromere as the number of chromosomes. Okay, this is an overview of a, um, entire meiosis. So meiosis has meiosis one and meiosis two. Before meiosis take place, also the cell has interface. Interface is composed of G1, S, G2 phase. Right? Do you remember G1, S, G2 phase? And especially in S phase, chromosome duplication take place. Right? From S phase, two sister chromatids are formed. Now this, so if I ask about, look at this cell, how many chromosomes are there? How many chromosomes are there here? If I ask you write down chromosome number with diploid notification, to n equal how many chromosome? Two, okay. And then in this cell, if you write down two n equal four, this is correct or wrong? This is wrong. Still, 
2 n equal 2. Why? Here's central mu just bound, bind to sister chromatid. Now, so there are two chromosomes inside the cell. From the meiosis one, this chromosome number reduce in half. So how many chromosomes you count here? This is one chromosome. Therefore, we cannot say, we cannot say 2n equal one. This is not correct because when 2n equal two, you cannot write down 2n equal one, this is wrong. So once chromosome number reduced in half, you have to divide the same number to both side, left and right side. So when you divide two by two, become one, we have to divide two n, divide by two also. So it become n equal one. So it become already haploid. This is what two n is diploid. So meiosis start from diploid, but in the middle of meiosis, chromosome number reduce in half. And then meiosis two, you can see that meiosis one, even though chromosome number reduce in half, still sister chromatid bind each other, right? These sister chromatid separate during meiosis two. It's a similar to mitosis, right? But how many chromosomes exist inside the cell? Still one chromosome. So is n equal one. Still continue to carry haploid until the end of meiosis. Only difference between meiosis one and meiosis two is different number of daughter cell. At the end of meiosis one, there are two daughter cells. At the end of meiosis two, there are one, two, three, four, four daughter cells are formed. Now, one more time, how many chromosomes inside the cell? Just count this centromere, then two n equal two, right? After meiosis one, chromosome become one and we call this haploid cell. And then after meiosis two, still one chromosome, so still haploid, but there are four daughter cells. Okay. When you look at this one, this is a sister chromatid. Sister chromatid means the chromosome duplicate, right? And then when you, when they bind these together, when they group them together, because they are homologous chromosome. Now, we will study meiosis one and meiosis two in detail. So meiosis one is preceded by interface. So you saw that the chromosome duplicate to form uh, sister chromatid. Okay. The sister chromatids are genetically identical and joined at the centromere. The single centrosome replicate, centrosome and centromere, they are different, right? Centrosome, it has two centrioles. It has two centrioles. And these two centrioles formed and then they migrate to each pole. And then from centrosome, from centrioles or centrosome, there's a spindle fiber, some kinds of a fiber or string, spindle microtuber produce, and then this spindle microtuber is gonna attach it to centromere later. Okay. And then meiosis one can be divided into four phases, prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one followed by cytokinesis. If you look at prophase one, this is prophase one. You can see this homologous pair and then each chromosome duplicate to form sister chromatid. Okay. So 
when you look at duplicated chromosome, it's pretty much condensed. And then homologous chromosome pair up. They come together in pair. They, they are not just as, you know, freely separate. Look at here, homologous chromosome, they pair up. Here's pair up. Here's pair up, right? These homologous chromosomes uh, come together in pair. And then when you look at these paired homologous chromosome, how many sister chromatid you can count? One, two, three, four. So this new structure, in other words, the pairing up of a homologous chromosome consists four chromatid. We call this tetrad. So look at here, two sister chromatid, two sister chromatid, how many chromatid you can count? One, two, three, four. Four chromatid is called tetrad. Tetrad, one more time. One, two, three, four chromatid, we called tetrad. Four chromatid. And then when you look at this chromosome, this pair of homologous chromosome, there are some kinds of crossing over or exchanging some portion of chromosome between a pair of homologous chromosome. So once this part exchange, then this red color chromosome will carry blue segment of a chromosome. And then blue chromosome will carry some portion of red color chromosome. Like this way, like this way, right? So we, go, we call this chiasmata, chiasmata, or chiasma, chiasma. Chiasma, this is plural, and then singular is uh, chiasma. Chiasma. This is a singular, this is a plural. Now you see this, we call this, this phenomena, we say crossing over red and blue, a pair of homologous chromosome exchanges some portion of a chromosome. We call this crossing over, and then this site we call chiasma. Chiasma. Now, there is two places genetic exchange occur. That kind of uh, chromosomal behavior can be observed on the prophase one of meiosis. Prophase one of meiosis. So chiasma occur in prophase one of meiosis one. And the rest of the thing is uh, nuclear envelope also dismantled. And then centrosome during interface, centrosome already duplicated and then start to migrate to each pore. Centrosome, one centrosome move to one pore, the other centrosome move to the other pore. That is the phenomena of during prophase one. And then when you move to metaphase one, these, a pair of homologous chromosome lined on equatorial plane at the center of the plane. And then at the time, the spindle microtubule produced from centrosome is already attached to centromere by way of kinetochore. Yes, spindle microtubule attached to kinetochore. Kinetochore is a protein complex associated with centromere region. So you can see spindle fiber attached to kinetochore in centromere region. Okay, so chromosome line up by homologous pair. That is the chromosomal behavior during metaphase one. Anaphase one is this homologous chromosome separate one member of each pair of homologous chromosome go to one pole and 
the other member of a pair of homologous chromosome move to the other pole. Spindle microtubule drag each member of homologous chromosome to both poles. Therefore, homologous chromosome now separate. Each pair of homologous chromosome become separate. Okay, that occur during anaphase one. Therefore, if you see telophase one, you can see two nucleus present inside the one cell because the cytokinesis has not occurred yet. But if we look at inside the two nuclei condition, inside the, each nuclei has already half chromosome number, haploid. And then two clusters of chromosome have formed and then each cluster contain one member of each pair of homologous chromosome. Therefore, the daughter nuclei, this is already haploid. Now, the spindle microtubule is disappeared. And then look like uh, two nuclei inside uh, one cell. Then immediately cytokinesis occur. Do you remember cytokinesis? Microfilament, microfilament uh, protein, cytoskeleton is gonna pull, constrict the microfilament ring toward the center, therefore, Eventually, this to the cytoplasm is going to divide into half. Therefore, you will have two separate cells like this, like this. So, you finish meiosis one. And from meiosis one to this is meiosis two. Between these, there is no interface. After meiosis one, meiosis two occur immediately. So there is no interface. There is no interface means there is no chromosome duplication. Since there is no interface between meiosis one and meiosis two, meiosis two immediately take place right after cytokinesis of meiosis one. Meiosis Two also consists of prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, and telophase two, followed by cytokinesis, another round of cytokinesis. Prophase two, the spindle microtubule form again. Do you remember? In telophase one, spindle fiber disappear, but in prophase two, this spindle fiber come back again. So spindle microtubules reform and attach to the cystochromatid, this time cystochromatid. Homologous pairs separate during meiosis one. So you cannot see a pair of homologous in the doro cell during meiosis two. They already separate. But you can see cystochromatid. And on this cystochromatid microtubule, spindle microtubule try to attach it to the cystochromatid. And metaphase two, the chromosome line up along the equator. The cystochromatids of each chromosome are attached to spindle microtubule by a kinetic core, and the microtubule leads to opposite pole. Okay, this microtubule leads to opposite pole. And in phase two, the chromatids separate into independent dual chromosome. So see this chromatid separate, and then one chromatid move to one end, the other chromatid move to the other end. Chromosome themselves cannot move, but actually spindle microtubule pull them, pull uh, chromatid toward their pole. Telophase two, the chromosome finish moving to opposite pole. And then nuclear envelope reformed and then chromosome decondense. So it become chromatin. 
and then immediately cytokinesis occur. Therefore, one, two, three, four Doro cells are formed. And each Doro cell contain one member of each pair of homologous chromosome. This is the end of meiosis. So one more time, prophase one of meiosis one. Prophase one of meiosis occupies more than 90% of the time required for meiosis. Chromosome become condensed. In synapse, synapse means a pair of homologous chromosomes come in together. And then they pair up, they align side by side. We call that synapse. Each pair of chromosome form a tetrad because one chromosome has two sister chromatid. And a pair of chromosome means two chromosomes. The other member of a pair of homologous chromosome also has two sister chromatid. So you have all four sister chromatid. We call this what? Tetrad, a group of four chromatid. In crossing over between non-sister chromatid of a pair of homologous chromosome, crossing over take place. Non-sister chromatid exchange DNA segment. So crossing over occur between non-sister chromatid of a pair of homologous chromosome. Each tetrad usually has one or more chiasma or chiasmata, the same meaning, chiasma, chiasmata. It appears as X shape because two non-sister chromatid cross each other. We call the crossing over, so it looks like X shape region where crossing over occur. So we will see. Here's a pair of homologous chromosome, right? And then each chromosome is duplicated. So here's sister chromatid. And here's sister chromatid. And then crossing over never ever occur between sister chromatid. Crossing over never ever occur between sister chromatid. Crossing over occur between non-sister chromatid. So if we call these and these sister chromatid, these and these are what? Non-sister chromatid. Non-sister chromatid, okay? Between non-sister chromatid, there's crossing over occur. The site of crossing over is called chiasma, or chiasmata, chiasma, same, same meaning. See, can you see this X portion? Okay, here's X portion. So, once crossing over occur, once chiasma formed, then part of chromosome exchange between homologous chromosome. Can you see the beginning? It was entirely yellow color. Now it has portion of purple, portion of purple DNA segment. When you look at purple chromosome, now you can see portion of a yellow chromosome portion, and then you can see yellow chromosome segment. So some chromosome portion exchange, swapped. We call that chiasma at the site of crossing over. So crossing over is kind of a phenomenon. And then we call that site chiasmata or chiasma. One more time, this is cystochromatid. This cystochromatid. And this and this non-cystochromatid, even though they are a pair of homologous chromosome. Okay. Now between non-cystochromatid, crossing over occur. Can you see X shape here and then X shape here? Synapse occur. Synapse means associate and you know, attach it. Now, once this crossing over occur, some chromosome segment can be exchanged. So when you look at, see, 
this chromosome can carry coming from the other partner of homologous chromosome. So this crossover occur between non cystochromatid of a pair of homologous chromosome must occur within a homologous chromosome. But even though it occur between homologous chromosome, it should be non cystochromatid not within cystochromatid. So one more time in synapse, there is one more word synapse. Homologous chromosome loosely pair up aligned gene by gene. So this gene, there is some gene in this location and in this location is exchange, is exchange here. There is some gene located here, there is some gene located here, and then those genes can be exchanged. Each pair of chromosome form tetrad. We call this tetrad, we call this tetrad because there are four chromatid, a group of four chromatid, and then non cystochromatid exchange DNA segment here in a process called crossing over. Each tetrad usually has one or more chiasmata. So here's one, two, okay, sometimes more than two, sometimes only one, depending on you know, a chromosome also response to environment. So we have no way how many chiasmata will form between non cystochromatid X-shaped region where crossing over, this is the crossing over, uh, the site for crossing over occur. And then we call this uh, chiasmata or chiasma. So this is uh, the information written in expression. So in metaphase one, tetrad for cystochromatid line up at metaphase plate, equatorial plate at the center of the cell with one chromosome facing each pore. Spin the microtubules from one pore are attached to the kinetic core of one chromosome of each tetrad. Microtubules from the other pore also attached to kinetic core of the other chromosome. And a phase one, pairs of homologous chromosome separate. See, the separation of a homologous chromosome. That is the main event in anaphase one. One chromosome move toward each pole guided by the spindle apparatus. Sister chromatids remain attached at the centromere and move as one unit toward the pole. Now, from this slide, anaphase one. I hope students just to erase for this one because there's no any contents of a metaphase one in this slide. So, on a phase one, homologous chromosomes separate, but cystochromatids remain attached. A cystochromatid has not separated yet. Only a pair of homologous chromosomes say bye bye. That is the event in on a phase one. So, look at here prophase one, the four chromatid, in other words, tetrad coming together, they pair up. A pair of homologous chromosome pair up. See? And also what happened here? This is crossing over here. So this is the site of a crossing over, which is called chiasma. Chiasma. Only one place we call the chiasma. If we see more than one, we can say chiasmata. And then can you see here chiasma? One here's chiasma, but look at here, chiasma only occur between non cystochromatid of a pair of homologous chromosome. Chiasma cannot occur from between different homologous pair. Now, Professor One, each homologous pair undergo synapsis. Then synapsis means they attach tightly, they pair up. And crossing over between non cystochromatid with the subsequent appearance of chiasmata. Now, metaphase one, metaphase one, chromosome line up as a homologous pair on the metaphase plate. 
equatorial plate. Another fifth one, homologous chromosomes separate from each other. But when you, so these, these homologous pair, they separate, separate. But when you look at each chromosome, two sister chromatid still remain joined at the centromere. Can you see why each chromosome has some mosaic color? Because the crossing over occurred during prophase one. That crossing over or chiasma continue to metaphase and anaphase. Now one more time. Here's this is a pair of a homologous chromosome. And then you can hear this is a sister chromatid. Sister chromatid. And then between these and these chromosome, we call non sister chromatid. And if you look at this part, there is some, this is the location of gene one. This is the location of gene two. You need to have a gene for your eye color. You need to have a gene for hair. You need to gene for ear lobe. So many physical appearance depend on the gene. So this is the location of maybe eye color. This is the location of gene for hair. And then the other pair, the other element of a pair of a homologous chromosome also has same location for gene one here and gene two. We call that allele, allele. This is a pair of a homologous chromosome and then same location but the genetic information, genetic content can be a little bit modified. We call that allele, allele. This allele will come back later when you study genetics. But I just want you to know when you have some concept, this allele can be exchanged. Okay? So for example, if I say gene one is for, this gene is for, eye color, then this chromosome has eye color for blue eye color. This chromosome carry brown eye color. Once they form crossover here, crossover here, originally yellow chromosome has blue eye color. And Purple chromosome has brown eye color. But from this crossing over, they can change. This yellow chromosome can carry brown eye color. Also, this, this brown, the uh, purple chromosome can carry blue eye color. Because of a crossing over, Chiasmata, some gene can change their location. That is important concept when you study allele down the road. All right, let's go back to meiosis. Meiosis one is a uh, telophase. We complete anaphase one, the homologous chromosome separate. Okay. And in the beginning of telophase one, each half of the cell has a haploid cell because the chromosome number reduced in half already occur in anaphase one. So from telophase, then each chromosome still consists of two sister chromatid. And from telophase, there are two daughter cells formed after meiosis one, right after complete cytokinesis. So cytokinesis occur simultaneously forming two haploid daughter cell. In animal cell, cleavage photo forms. In case of a plant cell, cell plate form. So forming their cell plate is different in case of animal from outward inward. And in case of plant is from inward toward 
our world. So no replication, chromosome replication occur between the end of meiosis one and the beginning of meiosis two because chromosomes are already duplicated. Two sister chromatid remains after meiosis one. This means still duplicated condition. So let's look at meiosis two, also composed of prophase one, two, metaphase two, anaphase two, telophase two, followed by cytokinesis. Meiosis two is pretty much similar to mitosis. What is the main characteristic of mitosis? Two sister chromatids separate. That event occur during meiosis two. In meiosis, each doro cell is genetically distinct from the others and from the parents. We will see about that. Mitosis, each doro cell is genetically identical from parent cell. But in meiosis, each doro cell cannot be identical from parent cell because this chiasma crossing over occur during prophase one of meiosis. So the chromosome already exchanges some portion with the other pair of chromo or homologous chromosome. Therefore, the after meiosis, each doro cell has a distinct genetic configuration according to chiasmata crossing over. We will see that. Prophase two, the spindle fiber, a spindle microtube reform and attach it to cystochromatid, metaphase two, they align at equatorial plate, and then spindle microtubule is gonna drag chromatid to both ends. And then anaphase two or sister chromatid separate. And telophase two, there are nuclear envelope of reform and the spindle microtubule disappear. And then, but each doro cell has only one member of each pair of homologous chromosome. Okay. So during around another round of cell division, the sister chromatids finally separate for haploid doro cell. Contain each doro cell containing unduplicated chromosome. Okay. So you can see one, two, three, four doro cell, and then each doro cell has how many chromosome? Haploid. So let's solve this question. Which of the following events does not occur in prophase two, but does occur in only prophase one? Prophase one, you have a pair of homologous chromosome. Therefore, synapses occur, yes. Also, crossing over occur. I think the close answer is more like a crossing over and synapsis only. I think a prophase two or so uh, spindle formation take place. Yes, but uh, they are asking about all only the event can occur in prophase one. Prophase two, this crossing over and what? Crossing over and uh, synapsis cannot take place. So even though this spindle formation might be correct, but this and this cannot occur. Therefore, the, the D cannot be the answer. But this is enough, sufficient answer from this question. Only snaps is correct, but uh, crossing over also correct. So include synapses and crossing over together. This is the best answer. This is the best answer. And then prophase two, there's no crossing over, there's no synapses formed, therefore, even though there is a spindle formation appear on D, this cannot be the answer. So the answer is E. So this is the, another description about each phase of meiosis two. So you can read through uh, what is the main event in prophase two, metaphase two, and anaphase two. It's pretty much similar to mitosis in terms of separation of a sister chromatid. Okay. Now telophase two and then nuclear form and chromosome be begin decondensing to form chromatin. Okay. 
and telophase 2, immediately cytokinesis occur. Therefore, there are how many doro cells from meiosis? Four doro cells. And each doro cell has haploid set of unduplicated chromosomes because the sister chromatid already separated during anaphase 2 of meiosis 2. So it becomes unduplicated chromosome in telophase 2. And then each doro cell is very distinct from one another and even distinct from parent cell. So look at this during metaphase one, look at here. If I ask about the chromosome number equal, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, six chromosome. And then you can see three set of homologous pair, right? This and this homologous, another set of homologous, another set of homologous chromosome. Now, when this a pair of a homologous chromosome can align at the center of the cell, which set of a homologous chromosome has what position? This is a possible chromosome arrangement at metaphase of meiosis one. Maybe they can have this position or this purple and yellow they can swap the position. Well, this time, the second set of homologous chromosome, they can change the position. They might have this arrangement. So there is no way we cannot put our hands into the set and then we organize the position. That's impossible. Therefore, we do not know which member of a homologous chromosome pair faces toward which pole. So this is one pole. This, this at the, uh, if you think this as a cell, this, a set of a homologous chromosome is going to move to one pole. The other homologous chromosome partner is going to move to the other pole. Then after meiosis one, each daughter cell has this kind of this set of homologous chromosome. Every cell has different combination of a set of homologous chromosome. There are eight possible sets of homologous after meiosis one. Now, if we look at panel C, this my after meiosis one, meiosis two occur, and then these continue to give eight possible type of gamete after meiosis two. So this gamete might use for fertilization. This, every gamete has potential to form zygote. Therefore, you never know which gamete you are gonna be the partner of the other gamete of the other partner. So this is kind of showing genetic variability. Even though you share the same parents, your siblings has a different, in some sense, uh, you look after each other, but you have some unique physical appearance because there's, in case of six chromosome, there's eight different possibility to become gamete. You might choose this gamete to form zygote. Maybe your sister might choose this gamete to form zygote. Maybe your brother might choose this gamete to form zygote. That's why in this world, everyone has uniqueness except identical twin. So you have eight kinds of a possible type of a gamete. So how you can calculate possible combination? If you have six chromosome, n equal three, and then you will put these three as exponent, okay? Then this is gonna be two times, two times, two times equal eight possible types of gamete. Okay. 
So this kind of a random orientation of a chromosome is called independent assortment. Independent assortment. They have freedom. They have. They are independently assault each other. So kinds of shuffling the homologous chromosome create novel combination of chromosome. Just to get, you know, change the chromosome uh, position, this kinds of a shuffling, homologous chromosome create a novel, new combination of chromosome, right? So mitosis conserved a number of chromosome set, for example, deployed to deployed, producing cells are genetically identical to the parent cell. Meiosis reduced the number of chromosome set from diploid to haploid, producing cells that uh, differ genetically from each other and from the parent cell. Okay, one more time. Now we are compared between mitosis and meiosis. Okay, the parent cell. So how many chromosomes? One, two, three, four, five, six, two n equals six, right? And then even before duplication occur, you can find homologous chromosome. This and then this homologous set. And this and this homologous chromosome. This and this a pair of homologous chromosome, right? From mitosis, prophase one, the chromosome duplicate. Meiosis one, prophase one of meiosis, also chromosome already duplicated. This duplication occur before these cell division begin. Before M phase, there is an inner phase. Do you remember? Inner phase, during S phase, chromosome duplicate. So from S phase, they already formed sister chromatid. Now, when you look at prophase, okay, meiosis one, during prophase one, a pair of homologous chromosomes pair up. They attach side by side, right? At that time, crossing over, a chiasmata occur by way of a crossing over. Okay? And then mitosis, metaphase, they just line up at the equatorial plate. And the same thing, metaphase one, a pair of homologous chromosome line up at the center of the cell. Now, mitosis, anaphase and uh, telophase, the sister chromatid just separate and then move into doro cell, two doro cell. And each doro cell has same chromosome number as parent cell had. But meiosis, meiosis one, a pair of homologous chromosome pair up. Now, not pair up, aligned at the center of the cell. Now this, a pair of homologous chromosome separate. So anaphase one, interphase one, the chromosome number become reduced in half. Can you see this haploid n equal three? And this, after telophase one, of course, there is a cytokinesis, and then immediately meiosis two begin. And meiosis two is similar to this mitosis. So at the end of meiosis two, there are four doro cells produced, and each doro cell has only one set of homologous chromosomes. So you can read this, you can read this, and then DNA replication occur during inner phase, okay? Also same thing, inner phase. Now number of division, just one time. Meiosis one and two, therefore two time. Synapsis, no occur. But synapsis occur during prophase one. And at that time, crossing over occur between non cystochromatid resulting in Chiasmata, okay, and then still sister chromatid uh, attach each other. The number of doro cell, two doro cell produce from mitosis, four doro cell produce meiosis, and then each doro cell has haploid. 
In case of mitosis, there are two daughter cells, but each daughter cell has a diploid. And from mitosis, each daughter cell has a genetically identical. In case of meiosis, each daughter cell has different uh, genetic configuration compared to parent cell and even compared to daughter cell each other. Role in the animal cell enable multicellular adult to arise from zygote. Growth, repair, development, okay? and in case of meiosis, produce gamete, reduce number of chromosomes in half, introduce genetic variability among the gamete. One more time, look at the chromosome number. Meiosis start from diploid 2N, but after meiosis 2, actually after uh, meiosis 1, they have the chromosome number uh, decrease in half. And mitosis is maintain same chromosome number. And it actually, uh, this is for making oocyte egg. This is making sperm. And then there is a several round of cell division eventually produce oocyte and sperm. But in case of a female, there is a tissue named orgonium. This orgonium undergo um, mitosis and then they uh, form primary oocyte. And then this primary oocyte undergo meiosis. And then after meiosis, actually there are four daughter cells, but three daughter cells after meiosis two is gonna be degenerate. Okay? So it's not active. Only one single oocyte can function. In case of a sperm, they, uh, spermatogonium is uh, the diploid cell, and then it starts to undergo uh, meiosis to form primary uh, spermatocyte, and then they undergo uh, meiosis, and then they have one um, spermatogonium produce four sperm cells. Okay, so one uh, spermatogenesis, uh, the, each sperm can be functional. But in case of a female, there are four daughter cells formed after meiosis two, but three daughter cells become degenerate, so only one oocyte can be functional. So there is some uh, uniqueness to meiosis compared to mitosis. That is synapses and crossing over in prophase one. At a metaphase plate, in other words, equatorial plate, there are paired homologous chromosomes instead of individual replicated chromosome. Another uh, uniqueness is homologous chromosomes physically connect and exchange genetic information by way of crossing over to form chiasmata or chiasma. At another phase, it is a homologous chromosome instead of a cystochromatid that separate during meiosis. So cystochromatid adhere tightly um, until uh, the through uh, throughout meiosis one. Now I mentioned that genetic variation or genetic diversity produced in sexual life cycles contribute to evolution. Mutations are the original source of genetic diversity. The gene, the gene, this nitrogenous based sequence can be changed according to environmental change. When you have uh, too much UV radiation, also DNA based sequence can be changed, or maybe some, you might lose some DNA base. So mutation can take place. So mutations are the original source of genetic diversity. Mutations create different versions of a gene called allele. Allele, I introduced a little bit you know, before. Allele is like, uh, for example, you have, a, this is a, a simile, maybe you have the gene for red hat, but your brother 
has the gene for blue head. We call that allele. allele. Both has gene for head, but your head is red color. Your brother's head shows blue color, but both are stand for the gene for head. We call that allele. Allele is a little bit um, um, isoform of the gene. gene. Different version of the same gene. So reshuffling of allele during sexual reproduction produce genetic variation. The behavior of chromosome during meiosis and fertilization is responsible for most of the variation that arise in each generation. So three mechanisms contribute to produce genetic variability. One is independent assortment of chromosome. Do you remember a pair of homologous chromosome, their position can be shuffling. Okay? Therefore, the, each daughter cell has a different combination of a set of homologous chromosome. And also, inside a pair of homologous chromosome, crossing over occur. There's no fixed rule to generate crossing over. It's a little bit random event. Sometimes between non cystochromatid of a pair of homologous chromosome, there might be no crossing over take place. Sometimes more than three, more than four times crossing over can, place, can take place. Therefore, the outcome, when you look at the daughter cell from meiosis, each daughter cell has different combination of different DNA configuration of in the uh, one set of a homologous chromosome. Also, which gamete you are going to have to form zygote? That is random fertilization. So these three conditions produce genetic diversity in this world. Okay, this is the location of a gene, right? Gene. Once duplicated chromosome, the gene location, there's no change. Now, here, here's allele, different allele, this part and this part, you can see different allele, even though they can group into same homologous pair. Right? And then this crossing over occur, therefore, the chromosome, the allele position changes. So when you look at the outcome, all these four chromosomes, they will enter to daughter cell, and then each daughter cell will have different genetic configuration. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Some location of certain gene, we call that gene lossy. Lossy means plural, or single is a gene locus. Yes, the single one is gene locus. And then this chromosome comes from mother, a father. This chromosome comes from father. Right? They become a pair of a homologous chromosome. Okay? Both chromosomes carry the same allele of the gene at this locate, this locus, see, single locus. The organism is homozygous at this locus. The same color. Also look at here. This gene locus contain another gene for which the organism is homologous. But what about, look at here. Each chromosome carries different allele, different allele, different color, right, of this gene. So the organism is heterozygous at this locus. In other words, this is my be eye color gene, it's red eye color gene. This might be blue eye color gene. So you can have heterozygous gene, and then which is dominant, 
blue eye collagen is dominant to red eye collagen, then your eye will show blue eye color. So these kinds of genetic variation can occur during prophase one when the non-sister chromatid undergo a crossing over or shuffling of a, a pair of homologous chromosome at metaphase one. And a pair of homologous chromosome, how these a pair of homologous chromosome determine their position. And all these conditions will produce more and more uh, genetic diversity. So independent assortment chromosome. So homologous pair of chromosome orient randomly at metaphase one of a meiosis. Independent assortment, each pair of homo uh, chromosome sort a maternal and paternal homolog into daughter cell independently of the other pairs. So let's look at the figure, this one, one more time. This figure shows uh, kinds of a, a reshuffling of a, a, a pair of homologous chromosome at metaphase one. So as I said, we do not know which member of a homologous chromosome pair face toward which pole. This time in this cell, in this cell, yellow chromosome goes to uh, same daughter cell with the rest yellow chromosome. In this cell, the one purple chromosome goes with two other a yellow chromosome into the cell, right, like this. Therefore, we have no idea which member of a homologous chromosome pair face toward which pole. It's a random orientation. Uh, in these kinds of independent assortment, each pair of chromosome sort of maternal and paternal homolog into daughter cell independently of the other pairs. Therefore, the number of a combination possible when the chromosome assert independently into gamete is two power to n, so like this. So how we can estimate the possible combination number? Then we can calculate chromosome assert independently into gamete is two exponent n. n is a haploid number. In case of a human, n equal 23. So this number, you have to multiply 2 by 2 by 2 by 23 times. It gives 8 million possible combination of chromosome. This number is more than enough to produce genetic variability. So this is a simple a uh, simple example, possibility one, there is a four chromosome, right? And then after meiosis, you have four daughter cell. And each daughter cell has these kinds of chromosome combination. The other possibility has, you have different chromosome combination in this cell, in this daughter cell, you have a long blue cr uh, chromosome and a short red. Okay? The other combination has a long red chromosome and then short blue chromosome. So you will have different uh, combination of daughter cell in terms of independent assortment of homologous chromosome. So also in addition to independent assortment, there's crossing over occur. This crossing over produce recombinant chromosome, which combine DNA inherited from each parent. So in crossing over, homologous portions of two non sister chromatid trade each other, okay? trade chromosome segment. Therefore, crossing over contribute to the genetic variation by combining DNA from two parents into a single chromosome. Okay. This crossing over also contribute to 
generate more genetic diversity. Now one more time, the crossing over occur always between non cystochromatid And then there's chromosome portion exchange. And then if you look at the daughter cell, each daughter cell has all different DNA configuration. So <clears throat> crossing over contributes to genetic variation by combining DNA from two parents into a single chromosome. Also, the uh, random fertilization adds to genetic variability because any sperm can fuse with any oocyte. The fusion of two gametes, each with 4.8 million possible chromosome combination from independent assortment. Do you remember this number comes from 2 power 2, 23. Produce a zygote with any of about 70 trillion deployed combination. Okay. This is really enough number, enough probability to make yourself as a unique creature. Crossing over has even more variation. Each zygote has a unique genetic identity. This genetic variation really uh, connected to evolution. Okay? Natural selection results in the accumulation of a genetic variation favored by the environment. Sexual reproduction contributes to the genetic variation in a population which originate from mutations. We, we, this content will come back when you study evolution later. Now, you study mitosis and meiosis. But do mitosis and meiosis occur without mistake? How do errors in meiosis cause human genetic disorder? If something wrong during mitosis or meiosis, does that error impact human health or uh, bring some human disease? Do you remember M checkpoint? There are three checkpoints when you study mitosis, the cell cycle. M checkpoint means in the middle of a cell division, when sometimes spindle microtubule cannot attach to kinetic core properly. So sometimes when spindle microtubule cannot drag the chromosome to one pole properly, then what happened to the chromosome number in Doro cell? Okay, at the time, M checkpoint is going to make stop the process of cell division. But sometimes even that M checkpoint can be what? Loosely check. Therefore, the cell division might just progress with mistake. So, non disjunction of a sex chromosome in males or females produce abnormal number of X and Y chromosomes. Non-disjunction, non-disjunction. It's a new word, non-disjunction. That means it's not proper segregation. It's not proper separation. Okay? So non-disjunction of a sex chromosome in male produce sperm with no sex chromosome. We indicated this as O, O, the alphabet O. Okay? Or two sex chromosomes, sperm might have XX, YY, or XY, okay? Sperm is supposed to have either one X or one Y, but sometimes the sperm can have XX, XY, YY too. So non-disjunction of a sex chromosome in female can produce egg that are no X chromosome, no X chromosome, or, or XX chromosome instead of one X chromosome. So normal female egg should have one X chromosome, but sometimes some egg has two XX or some egg does not have even single X chromosome. 
when normal gamete fuse with these defective sperm or eggs, the zygote have normal number of autosome but abnormal number of sex chromosome because there is some problem occur on sex chromosome, not on autosome. The most common abnormalities are XO, XXX, XXY, and XYY. Uh, we can put this category as mutation, but this is a severe mut mutation. Mutation means sometimes the DNA-based sequence can be changing. We call that mutation. That is a little bit a small level of a mutation. The changing of a chromosome number is, is higher level of a, uh, higher level of a chromosome, and then it can be serious. So normal meiosis. How many chromosomes in this set? 2n equal 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, all 4. So normal meiosis, non-disjunction non during meiosis 1, non-disjunction during meiosis 2. Okay, but the beginning start point is uh, normal. So parent cell has four chromosomes, or category, all three categories. And then meiosis one, the normal meiosis, in case of that, the meiosis one, they have, daughter cell has haploid chromosome. And then after meiosis, each daughter cell has, I'm sorry, haploid, therefore this should be two. This should be two, right? So can you see one, two? One, two, one, two, one, two. Each daughter cell has a two chromosome. So this is just normal meiosis. No mistake, no error. But when you look at non-disjunction during meiosis one, look at here. Now, a pair of homologous chromosomes supposed to align at equatorial plate, and then a pair of homologous chromosome supposed to separate to each pole toward each pole, but in this pair of homologous chromosome, they, no problem, one member of homologous pair move to this pole, the other member move to the other pole, good. But the other homologous pair, they did not separate. They do not separate and they move to same pole. So after meiosis one, one daughter cell has three chromosomes. The other daughter cell has only one chromosome. And then this condition continue to undergo meiosis two. Therefore, when you look at daughter cell from this cell, then they will have n equal n equal one. Okay. And then each daughter cell has potential to be to form zygote. Okay. Each daughter cell will fuse with gamete from the other partner, right? Then what will happen? The chromosome number of that zygote. One more time, non-disjunction during meiosis two. The starting point is two n equal four, and then meiosis one occur normally, no mistake, but during meiosis two, when cystochromatid separate, this cell is correct, no error. But in this daughter cell, two cystochromatid move to same pole. Therefore, after entire meiosis division, then this daughter cell will have three chromosome. This one has one, and then the other has two, both. So if this cell participate for fertilization, then the next generation, there will be no problem. But if this gamete or this gamete is gonna fuse with other gamete from partner, then the chromosome number of zygote will be changed. 
So this is uh, non-disjunction means the members of a chromosome pair fail to separate. So the number of a chromosome pair cannot separate correctly. We call that non-disjunction. Non-disjunction means the members of a chromosome pair cannot separate correctly. So here, chromosome pair cannot separate. See, therefore, the daughter cell will have abnormal chromosome number. Here, a pair of chromosome or even sister chromatid cannot separate correctly. Therefore, the daughter cell will have abnormal chromosome number. We call this non-disjunction. So this is an example uh, in case of a human, once non-disjunction occur on the sex chromosome during meiosis, what kind of disorder human can have? Okay. We will see figure and then it might be, no. let's solve this question. When a gamete fuse during fertilization, a uh, zygote formed. Now you more familiarize this word and the word fertilization. Okay. Now we'll continue to this non disjunction. How do errors in meiosis cause human genetic disorder? Okay. So the genes on the X chromosome are so essential to survival that any embryo without at least one X chromosome spontaneously abort very early in pregnant. You, you will see like this. This is a diploid. Diploid. So it's gonna be 44 plus XX. Okay. In case of a male, he starts from diploid. 20 equal 44 plus XY. Now once, once this diploid undergo meiosis, then they will have N equal 22 plus X, right, haploid, N equal 22 plus Y, right? Uh, these are the gamete. And this gamete supposed to be N equal 22 plus X, but this time N equal 22 plus X, X, right? And then in this case, N equal 22. And then there is no, oh, I'm sorry. There is no X chromosome. Okay, we write down then this as the zero. Okay, and that zero O like that, right? And then if these are the gamete, right? In other words, egg, this is a sperm. When this egg and then this sperm fuse to form zygote, then you just add up them. 2N equal 44 plus XXX. In this case, if this egg fuse with this sperm, it's gonna be, just add up this and this, 2N equal 44 plus one X coming from this uh, male gamete, okay, sperm. No sex chromosome. Only this X chromosome comes from male gamete, sperm. When this gamete fuse with this male gamete, then you just add up to n equal 44 plus XXY, XXY. In this case, to n equal 44 plus YO. So this has how many chromosomes? 45 chromosomes. This has how many chromosomes? 46, I uh, 47. Here's 47. We are supposed to have a 46 chromosome. Then 45 chromosome. It's really hard to survive, except Turner syndrome, except this case, if human, the zygote has 45 chromosome, it's really fatal. But in case of a 47 chromosome, 
it's more than 46 chromosome. So you might think that, oh, more is, might be better. That's not true. They have one more chromosome, but that gives some kinds of disorder. We will study that. So non-disjunction can occur meiosis as well as by way of mitosis. So this is mitosis non-disjunction. So far, we saw that the non-disjunction occur on a sex chromosome. Non-disjunction can be resulted from meiosis, but non-disjunction can occur by way of mitosis. So this is 2N, and then this mitosis is gonna supposed to have identical genetic configuration. So, okay, but, from this cell, when this cell undergo mitosis, maybe spindle, microtuber, drag the cystochromatid, two cystochromatid to one pole together. Therefore, the chromosome number, the abnormal chromosome number can be formed that in case is 47 and then it has 44 plus XYY. And the other Doro said, we lose one sex chromosome to the other Doro said, therefore, 2N equal 45 plus XO. I'm sorry, this is not 45, 44, I'm sorry, 44 plus XO, therefore total is 45, okay? because 44 are orosome, and then the rest of two supposed to be sex chromosome. In this Doro cell, it has only one sex chromosome, not two sex chromosomes. In this cell, it has more than two, three sex chromosomes. So, these kinds of abnormal chromosome number can be can result from mitotic non-disjunction. At the time, this 44 plus XYY can be formed. So in case of uh, Turner syndrome, a uh, female has N equal 22 plus no sex chromosome. And in case of a male, as a gammy, 22 plus X. Okay. Once they fuse together, they form 2N equal 44 plus XO. So Turner syndrome XO occurs in female with only one X chromosome. See, you see, you have only one X chromosome. So total chromosome number is what? 45. So Turner syndrome means uh, incomplete or uh, missing one X chromosome on 23rd uh, chromosome. At puberty, uh, hormone deficiencies prevent uh, this Turner syndrome from menstruation or developing a secondary sexual characteristics. So it affects uh, women, the lack of a mature egg so they remain infertile. Additional symptoms include a short stature and the skin around the neck area is folding, is fold, and then increased risk of cardiovascular disease, kidney defect, and hearing loss. So abnormal, another human disorder resulted from non-disjunction is Trisomy X or triple X is the same meaning. So this is N equal 22 plus XX. So it has how many chromosomes? Aploid 24. And here's is a normal. N equal 22 plus X. So if you combine them, we will have a 44 plus XXX. These three copies of X chromosome is called trisomy or triple X. It's the same meaning. It's 
normal woman with an extra X chromosome. And there's no any significant symptom can be shown. And there is an increased chance of a learning retardation and then tendency toward tallness associated with the trisomy X. In other words, if a female with a triple X, those females shows really very, very tall. Women with trisomy X bear normal XX and XY children. So in terms of reproduction, uh, the, there is no much problem for reproduction. So one more time, trisomy, it has three copies of X chromosome. Female is very tall. And then the ratio to have a trisomy X symptom is one out of 1,000. And then Turner syndrome is missing X chromosome. So they cannot reproduce offspring and then short statue and then the sex organ is now fully developed. So if we look at this um, diagram, the left woman shows trisomy X. It's very tall. Okay. Based on external appearance, it's, it's not really uh, clearly distinguished from uh, normal XX female, except by karyotype. But when we uh, take our blood from this triple X woman and then analyze the karyotype, this woman has one more uh, X copy, sex chromosome. And then, but the only difference is uh, very, very tall. But even with the normal XX chromosome, you know, 46 chromosome with the two XX chromosome female, they can be very tall. So you know, when we look at by naked eye, we have no way to distinguish uh, normal female woman and then trisomy X uh, woman. And then the right uh, woman shows this is uh, Turner syndrome. Okay? In other words, uh, there is no uh, X chromosome. So 44, uh, no, the all, only one X chromosome. There is one missing X chromosome. Okay? So total chromosome number is 45. Okay? A sterile female with a short a statue. And then uh, let's look at this uh, tunnel syndrome like this. Tunnel syndrome. Can you see this area? This around the neck area? And then neck area between neck and shoulder, uh, you can see some a little bit a web of a skin extend, a web of a skin extend between neck and shoulder. Okay. And then the breast is very poorly developed, and also Turner syndrome is the only case where having only 45 chromosomes is not fatal in humans. So in other words, if some, someone has like 44 plus, this one, it cannot be survived. But Turner syndrome is 20 equal 44 plus X, still have a 45 chromosome, right? Both cases had 45 chromosome. But in this case, uh, it's not survival. But only this Turner syndrome can survive with chromosome number 45. With only 45 chromosome, still it's not fatal in humans. Monosomic zygote, that means only one. Mono means one. One. Only a monosomic, but only one copy of a particular chromosome. Only X chromosomes are there. See here, XO. Okay, I told you that the mitotic uh, non disjunction, I explained that, and then in this case, we call this Jacob syndrome. Jacob syndrome have extra Y chromosome. Okay, men with Jacob syndrome have high levels of testosterone and maybe exceptionally tall too. Okay. Mm. And also it does not really show any well-defined syndrome, okay? except that they tend, to, they tend to be very tall. 
So, but this non-disjunction can occur through mitosis. Another case of uh, non-disjunction occurred by meiosis is Klinefelter syndrome. Klinefelter syndrome, in this case, female has a 40, uh, 22 plus XX in gamete oocyte, and then male has 22 plus. Then once you fuse them, and then the zygote has 2N equal 44 plus XXY. Okay. We call this Klinefelter syndrome. It uh, categorized into male, but this male has one extra X chromosome. Most of these males show no symptom, although some may show mixed secondary sexual characteristic, such as the breast developed. Okay, and then the hip is broadening. And uh, the testes, uh, the size of the testes is small. And then uh, they are a sterile and may have a, a subnormal uh, intelligence and may have a female body character, female body characteristics such as enlarged uh, breast. So, so like this, you can see some breast development like a woman uh, and has a, one extra X chromosome. And then, um, and then the testis is uh, very small, abnormally small testis, and also uh, they are sterile. And then the probability is one out of 500 male birth. So Klinefelter syndrome, if you look at sex chromosome, it is going to be one more extra, one more extra chromosome. Okay, so three copies of a particular chromosome. And non-disjunction of orosome. So far, we uh, study non-disjunction of sex chromosome, but non-disjunction of orosome can occur during meiosis in the father or mother. Okay, so. Orosome, let me remind you, to 2n equal 44 plus xx and 2n equal 44 plus xy. These 44 chromosomes we call orosome. Resulting in eggs or sperm that are missing an orosome or that have two copies of an orosome. Fusions of these gametes uh, with a normal sperm or egg result in a zygote with one or three copies of an affected orogen. So for example is trisomy 21, in other words, Down syndrome. Down syndrome has three copies of chromosome 21. When I say chromosome 21 means the uh, homologous pair we group them and put the numbering and then 21st of homologous pair. We call that chromosome 21. So chromosome number 23, then it will make a 46 chromosome, right? But in, so each chromosome number has two chromosomes as a homologous pair, but on chromosome 21, there are three chromosomes, not two chromosomes. Okay, we call that trisomy three chromosomes at chromosome 21. In other words, Down syndrome. And Down syndrome includes this kind of a characteristic, very weak muscle tone and a small mouth. And then the mouth is usually open because, you know, to accommodate the tongue and then the eyelid uh, has a little bit distinctively shaped, okay? So also they have a little bit, heart formation is not uh, normal. And some, they can be easily infected. So Down syndrome, uh, you can write down this way. Down syndrome can occur to female and male, both gender, but only this part, the number of orosome 
is different. Sex chromosome, they, there is no problem on the patient with Down syndrome. Orosomal chromosome number, abnormal. Correlation between maternal age and incident of Down syndrome. In other words, when mom has baby at late age, maybe late, you know, early in 50s or late in 40s and then have a preg mom become pregnant and then there's some uh, high probability to have a baby who, uh, who has Down syndrome. And then the skeletal system is uh, weak, so they are short and have a poor muscle tone. So like this way, so you can see the small mouth held open partially because uh, they want to accommodate the tongue. And then if you look at eyelid, this eyelid part, and then it's a little bit distinctly shaped. Okay. So some, there's some question about uh, do Down syndromes have a shorter lifespan? And then until early 1980s, the average lifespan of a person with Down syndrome is about 25 years. It's pretty short. But scientists and medical doctors set up some institution and then provide well care to people with Down syndrome. So today, the average lifespan of a person with Down syndrome is approximately 60 years. It's still shorter than normal people, but longer than 25 years. Look at this karyotype. Can you see chromosome number 21? Okay. Each chromosome number has two chromosomes, such as homologous pair. But 21, chromosome 21, it has three chromosomes, not two chromosomes. This one extra copy of chromosome on chromosome 21 makes people with Down syndrome. Okay. So the more chromosome number does not mean good. Just exactly 46 chromosomes that makes uh, people normal. So this is a non-disjunction and unuploid. That means the non-disjunction can occur during meiosis, even sometimes mitos mitosis too. And then when the Doro cell has abnormal chromosome number, we call that unuploid. unuploid. So this is the end of uh, meiosis today. So today's lecture. This is all for meiosis. Thank you.